Have you seen the Steambird? It seems Fontaine has been celebrating some kind of festival recently. Things are looking pretty lively in the square. They even changed the banners. Huh, there are a lot of people holding cameras. Oh, and they've got candy and snacks too. Looks like everyone's having a good time. Let's go and have a look for ourselves. Seriously? But, Mr. Morris, I don't understand, sir. How could you only be telling me this now? <sighs> I'm afraid that there's nothing really I can do. I'm really facing a crisis. My hands are tied. But what about my film? Well, I'm afraid you have to come up with something on your own. Take it from me. Sometimes you just have to let things go. Same goes for this film festival. Oh, oh! Hey, isn't that Xavier? So he's back in Fontaine now. Xavier! Oh, why, if it isn't the dear traveler and Paimon, I really didn't expect to bump into you here at this time. Well, I was doing just fine until I received some terrible news just now. The investor I was working with for my upcoming film has fallen upon some hard times and is no longer able to provide the promised amount of funds. Can't you just find a different investor? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. We had signed an agreement specific to the Fontanalia Film Festival, stipulating that I cannot work with any other investors until the festival is finished. The Fontanalia Film Festival? What's that? Oh, is this your first time participating in Fontaine's Fontanalia Film Festival? Then allow me to fill you in. <laughs> The Fontanalia Festival was established to commemorate the legendary Loch Knights, who went on a quest to search for the Oceanids and eventually welcomed the Hydro Arconigeria. Uh, the holiday is deeply connected to the founding of Fontaine, as well as its unique laws and trials. It's one of the most important festivals for this nation. But what's with that weird expression on your face? It's like you're trying really hard to remember something. Ah, oh, I was just trying to recall the exact description from the books. <laughs> In order to avoid any uh, unnecessary arguments over semantics, <laughs> I usually try to recite things straight from the source. Well, either way, Pyra thinks she gets it now. It's just like the Windbloom Festival in Mondstadt and the Lantern right in Lille. Yes, those are festivals of a similar variety. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good festival? And just like those of other nations, Fontaine will hold a plethora of events around this time each year. To commemorate the Loch Knights, people will imitate them by putting on special costumes, raising golden cups, and going door to door asking for pure water. But a few years ago, Lady Farina started to find the whole idea a little drab, and so decided to change the part about pure water to sweets. That really doesn't surprise Paimon at all. The whole thing seems more akin to a carnival now, and it's quite popular among the kids. Every year you can hear a bunch of them saying, trial or treat. Oh, that sounds pretty fun. But how does that connect back to the film festival you mentioned? Ah, yes, I, it appears I've strayed off topic. <laughs> I just got too excited after seeing you. Let me get back to the point. The Fontanalia Film Festival is an event proposed by the Fontaine Film Association this year. Now that film technology has matured as a medium, it's the perfect time to introduce more people to the art form. During this time, people may submit films to be evaluated, and the entry with the highest score will be given the Farina Award by the Association. The what award? 
the Farina Award. You know, after the Hydro Archon. They coined it while Lady Farina was still in power, but uh, even though things have changed, no one has made any motion to update the name. Perhaps everyone still thinks of it as a pretty appropriate name. Even though she isn't the Hydro Archon any longer, Lady Farina is still Fontaine's superstar. Anyone with eyes can see the way she shines on the stage. Ah. Alright. Guess the name does work pretty well when you put it that way. Oh, but who would have guessed there'd be an issue with the funding? How will I ever explain this to Miss Chiori? Not to say all the other actors who traveled all the way here from Inazuma. Chiori? Uh, sounds familiar. Where have we heard that name before? Yes, that's her. I asked her to oversee the event's art direction, including the design of the actors' costumes and appearances. Oh, Paimon remembers now. Navia said that her clothes were designed by Chiori, and Kirara's outfit too. How to describe her? Uh, well, she tends to be pretty direct and can be very forceful when it comes to dealing with people. The fashion world in Fontaine has dubbed her the Thundering Seamstress. Her remarkable designs have led many Fontanians to become very interested in Inazuma. Anyway, Chiori is acquainted with all the actors I've invited from Inazuma. Without her help, I don't think I would have been able to get such an international cast for the film. She really is a kind soul. Who are the actors from Inazuma? Do we know them? Why don't the two of you accompany me to the Aquabus station to welcome them? Judging from the time, the Aquabus should be arriving shortly. Chiori will be waiting to meet me there as well. Miss Chiori? <sighs> Your talk with the investor sure went fast. The Aquabus hasn't even arrived yet. Oh? And who are they? Ah, uh, allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Pleased to meet you. Likewise! We've heard the owner of Chiori Ya Boutique is a skilled seamstress, so it's a real pleasure to finally meet you in person. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure she wouldn't always look like a cat that had been unceremoniously dropped in a bucket of paint. So tell me, what happened? I can tell the conversation didn't go quite as expected. 
Ah, oh, well, it's like this. Ugh. I know, I know, Chiori, you don't have to say it. You did remind me that this investor was a little bit sketchy. Yes, there's no doubt about that. But how could I pass it up? <laughs> he offered me twice as much as the others. And therein lies the problem. Yes, but just put yourself in my shoes. After obtaining such an excellent script, it's only natural that I would want to make the most of the film. The budgets that the others had proposed were nowhere near enough. It's difficult to find someone willing to front such a large amount of Mora, so... Don't be sad, Xavier. We might be able to help scrounge up some more together for you. Oh, thank you, Paimon. That means a lot to me. But the cost of the film is staggering. I'm afraid that any Mora we can scrounge together in a short amount of time won't even be able to cover the actor's fees. We need to move on. What's happened has already happened, and there's no changing it. But now's not the time to give up. What? You're saying that you have a plan? No, that's not what I mean. I'm simply saying I wouldn't give up just yet. The actors I recommended aren't just after Mora after all. Really? Then where do you live? We Malazines live in Marisi Village. The only way to enter is from underwater. Oh, you must be pretty tired after work every day, right? I mean, you have to swim all that way just to go home. We are so thoughtful. But some Malazines choose to live in the Court of Fontaine because it's so much more convenient. And this is our stop. Oh, we've arrived, but I haven't even finished chatting with Abel yet. I also enjoyed Abel's introductions to Fontaine along the way. Everything you described was so clear and detailed that we can't help but want to hear more. Thank you so much. I'm usually working here on this aqua bus, so I hope I'll have the chance to see you again. There are still many more places I'd like to introduce to you. <laughs> Welcome to the Court of Fontaine. <sighs> Chiori, you sure have changed a lot. This is the first time we've seen you since you left Inazuma. I haven't realized it's been so long. I was in such a rush when I left that I didn't even get to say goodbye. Thank you for extending the invitation, Mr. Xavier. I'm looking forward to a fruitful trip here in Fontaine. Ah, uh, it's an honor to have the head of the Kamisato clan visit us. So they are who you meant when you said you had actors coming from Inazuma? Oh? It's the Traveler and Paimon! Wow, what a coincidence! Ayaka and I were just talking about you on the way here! Are you also here for the film? We just ran into Xavier earlier and came over with him. <laughs> but I'm not an actress. Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka are the real actors here. I'm just tagging along with Ayaka to have a good time together. Uh, about that. I mean, how was I supposed to contact you when I was making preparations for the film? I figured you were probably busy and I didn't want to disturb you. So I could only keep you in the back of my mind while I sought other actors to play the lead roles in the film. <laughs> I had been thinking about a surprise reunion with you during our trip here. But you still managed to surprise me first. Oh, so you all know each other already! <laughs> My, what a coincidence! What are the chances everyone could be brought together here like this? Why don't we go to Hotel de Boer and catch up over a meal? I've already made a reservation! Huh? Did you reserve two spots for us, too? Yes, of course, of course! I'll be sure to tell the boss to serve a few more delicious dishes just to make sure there'll be enough food. Very well. Then please, kindly lead the way, Mr. Xavier. Wow! The buildings in Fontaine are so tall! Just look at how big they are! 
And there's the fountain that Aval mentioned earlier. It really is a magnificent sight. And look at that huge spinning sphere! Where does it get its power? <gasps> Wait a sec! Could it be one of those clockwork mecha we've heard so much about? from Bontina's like. Oh, it sure is different from what we have in Inazuma. How should I describe it? It seems like you have to go through a lot more uh, steps to make them. And the flavor has many layers too. Ah, uh, yes. When I first went to Inazuma, I actually thought the food there tasted a little too bland. It took some time for me to get used to it. Let's get back to the purpose of this trip for a moment, shall we? How have preparations for the film been coming along, Mr. Xavier? Well, I've already assembled most of the film crew. A lighting specialist, a prop manager, and a costume designer. I've also bought the copyrights from the novel's author. Oh, it's called The Two Musketeers, right? I read the script you sent me on the way here. The story is pretty good. Originally, I was planning to start filming as soon as Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka arrived in Fontaine, but uh, I'm afraid I've run into a bit of a problem. Oh? What is it? It has to do with the film's investor, Mr. Morris. He suddenly informed me this morning that he's encountered some financial trouble and will be unable to release to me the amount of funding agreed upon. It's said that Fontaine's legal system is well developed. If he has violated the contract, then can't you simply take him to court over the matter? Ah, well, I'm still more concerned about filming. Even if I were to take him to court, I'm afraid it would take months before the case could even be heard. Then, is there a way we could raise funds ourselves to solve the problem? I've considered that option too, but unfortunately it's difficult to gather such a large amount of mora on such short notice. Besides, we have to consider the film festival's submission deadline. Hmm. Mr. Xavier, if Ayaka and I were willing to perform for free, would that resolve the problem you are currently facing? What? Uh, no, out of the question! To have you come all this way just to act for free? Oh, no, 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 that won't do. There's no need to worry, Mr. Xavier. My brother and I had actually intended to work for free after receiving your invitation. Inazuma has only recently reopened its borders, and needs to strengthen its relations and cultural ties with other nations. We didn't have many collaboration projects with Fontaine in the past, so we hope this trip would serve as a good start for the future. Indeed. You could say that's the real reason why the Yashiro Commission agreed to come to Fontaine. I understand, but having you two act for free just doesn't seem right. Not at all. While we're officially here to conduct a cultural survey of sorts, we must express our sincerity if we want to establish formal cultural ties with your nation. This film will serve as proof of friendly cooperation and cultural exchange between Inazuma and Fontaine. It's my hope that the film can be finished and released as smoothly as possible. If you still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement, I would also be more than happy to be introduced to some other renowned individuals in Fontaine's literary and artistic circles. Uh, uh, all right, I'll do as you say. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll make sure to cobble together enough more and now, even if it means selling my house, my camera, and every single family heirloom. Come on now, no need to go that far. I'll also help you out as a brand sponsor. Me too. Even though I didn't bring much more to spend on this trip, it's still better than nothing. You are too kind, all of you. 
I... I really don't know how to... <laughs> Ugh, ew. All right, enough about that. Now that we have Xavier's savings, my support, and two leads who are willing to act for free, I think we will be able to make this happen. So, instead of Mora, you'll help with filming and production. Oh, but how can we help with that? We don't know much about making a film. All right. Pull yourself together, Xavier. Tell us if there are still any open positions left among the crew. Uh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, let me think. We still need a camera operator, a clapper loader, and someone to manage logistics. I originally wanted to personally serve as director, but I've been too busy working as the producer. So the positions of director and director's assistant will also need to be filled. Paimon knows what the director and the logistics support person do, but what's a clapper loader? The clapper loader is responsible for using the clapper board to record and organize the information of each shot when the camera operator begins shooting. The work requires both patience and careful attention to detail. A clapper board? Oh, you mean the thing they hold that goes clap whenever they start filming? Yes, that's right. Are you interested in that job? For sure! Paimon's always wanted to try that! Alright, then you'll be our clapper loader. I can find someone from the store to help with logistics. What do you think, Xavier? Oh, fine by me. As for our camera operator, I was thinking of letting the Traveler take the role. Oh, he's great when it comes to using a camera. Paimon can't even count how many things we've taken photos of during our journey. Yes, that's also what I was thinking. I noticed the Traveler had an eye for photography and composition when we worked together previously. I'm sure that's due to the Traveler's journey across Devat and all the places they've seen. After so many adventures, using a camera must be second nature by now. What do you say, Traveler? Are you interested in the job? Thank you. It really means a lot to me. Come on, friend. Let me give you a big warm hug. So all that's left for us to find is a director and an assistant. Oh, me, me, me. I want to be the director's assistant. All we need to do is help the director, right? I can handle that. All right, then all we need is a director. Oh, all the well-known directors in Fontaine are probably also busy working on their own films these days. I'm not sure who will have time to help. Oh, Farina helped out a theater troupe recently by serving as an artistic consultant. She could be a good director, right? Besides, it's not like she has anything else to do right now. <laughs> Farina? Uh, do you really think Lady Farina would be willing to help us with our humble project? <laughs> Isn't that the name of Fontaine's Hydro Archon? My brother has already informed me about what happened here in Fontaine. Yep, that's her! She helped out a theater troupe not too long ago, and now she's taking up work as a director! Well, uh... Ah, I saw that musical. Her performance was perfect. And the storyboards were also excellent. Don't let her former identity intimidate you. She's the best candidate we can think of right now. You'll never know until you give her a shot. Fine, you're right, Chiori. I'll do anything for the sake of my film, anything! <sighs> then I'll have to ask the Traveler and Paimon to show me the way to Lady Farina's residence. I just hope she'll agree to help. Do you need us to also come along? No, there's no need to trouble you with this. Besides, you've just arrived in Fontaine, and I'm sure there are many places you would like to visit. Just leave this task to me. It's part of my duties as the producer. Very well. Then we'll be waiting to hear the good news. I'll go with you. By the way, you might want to consider bringing a gift. And don't worry, we won't simply drop you off at Farina's place. We know Farina pretty well by now, so having some familiar faces there should help your chances. Besides, the whole thing was our idea in the first place. All right, then I'll start making preparations. As for the gift... Hmm... A gift for someone who was once seen as the Hydra Oricon. I wonder what she would like. 
I recall that Lady Farina once fancied a clockwork ring, so perhaps I should get another exquisite clockwork contraption for her. Huh? Can't we just bring some desserts, like the Fontanelia mousse? Hmm, but wouldn't that be a little too cheap? She does like desserts, though. Isn't the Fontanelia festival happening right now? I heard Avol tell us on the Aquabus that Farina introduced the tradition of going door to door and asking for sweets. To do something like that, she must have a real sweet tooth. I agree with Yoimiya. If the gift is too fancy, it might actually make her feel more uncomfortable. Alright then, let's go buy some Fontanelia mousse! But will that really be enough? We'll be asking her to do a lot of work, you know. Hmm, you're right. We need to further sweeten the deal. Huh? You want something even sweeter than Fontanelia mousse? Yes, we'll need a gift that's sweeter than any dessert in the world. But what could that be? <laughs> Your words of praise. Okay, I'll go knock on the door. Coming, coming. Ugh. Seriously, who's knocking before afternoon tea? Huh? Who are you? <clears throat> Lady Farina, please allow me to introduce myself. I am Xavier, a film director. Hello. Oh, is that the traveler in Paimon I see behind you? And who's this? I'm Chiori. Ah, oh, the one from Chioria Boutique. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, what are you all doing here? Uh, do you need something? Did you just get up, Farina? It's already past noon, you know. Huh? Oh, I... Uh, Paima means the weather is so nice in the afternoon and the sun is so warm. Just like how you make us feel. Sleeping in late is a really smart idea. Uh, no. I was just up late last night reading some novels. Uh, what does sleeping in have to do with the weather? <clears throat> this is a small gift we've prepared for you, Lady Farina. We hope you like it. No need to be so formal. I'm just a regular person like everyone else now. Oh, is this Fontanalia mousse? <laughs> it's one of my favorites! That's great! So, actually, there's something we need your help with. Given your renowned passion and understanding of drama, I would like to ask that you serve as the director of our film crew. Oh, but didn't you just say that you're a director? Yes, but for this particular project, I'm mainly working as a producer. Besides, I'm sure that your understanding of the performing arts far surpasses my own, Lady Farina. Are the Traveler and Paimon also part of the film crew? Yep, we sure are! Paimon's the clapper loader and he's the camera operator! Camera operator? That can be a pretty technical job, and it directly affects the final quality of the film. Are you really up to it? No, I'm not questioning your abilities. It's just that I've never really seen you use a camera before. Maybe you can come up with a test for the Traveler and see for yourself! 
If he can satisfy you with his camera skills, then you'd have nothing to worry about and can join the team. What do you say? Uh, you sure are getting better at rolling with the situation, Paimon. Hmm. Oh, I do wish to see how skilled the Traveler really is with a camera. All right. How about this? We'll work with what we have. I'll give you some scenarios and see if your work is up to my standards. Very good. It's essential for the camera operator to understand the director's vision. I'll make my decision after seeing your work. Are you ready? I have high standards, you know. Okay, grab the camera and I'll give you a scenario. that you have more skill than I thought. All the shots had a great composition, and I could really feel a connection to the characters and their lines. Yeah! Does that mean you agree to be our director, Farina? <laughs> Did you think I would agree just like that? After our performance of the Little Oceanid, I've begun to make a name for myself again, you know. In fact, I've already had several troops approach me for the Fontanaya Film Festival. Unfortunately, the scripts were all pretty boring and didn't pique my interest. If others were to find out I agree to work with you so easily, then, well... Hey, but didn't we have a deal? What else do we need to do to convince you, Farina? Uh, well, what about the pay? Huh? You know, how much you're willing to pay me to be the director? The pay is also an important factor for me to consider, you know. Well, uh, I can offer you this much? What? That's all? If Nervilat were to hear of this, he could charge you with underpaying your labor. I'm sorry, but our crew is in a tight financial spot at the moment. I see. Well, even though it's highly unlikely now that I'll join your crew, there's still something I'd like to ask. Exactly what film are you planning to make? Oh, uh, our script is an adaptation of The Two Musketeers. Huh? Wait, you mean the suspense thriller novel that was a number one bestseller? Oh, 
so Farina's read it too. Of course I read it. I've always had a keen interest in artistic works that strike a chord with the populace. I see. It all makes sense now. You must have used most of the budget to pay for the copyright. Uh, not really. The novel's author transferred the copyright to me practically for free once he heard that I wanted to make a film adaptation of the story. The lack of budget is due to another issue. He probably just wants to get his name out there. So, Mora isn't the most important thing to him right now. It reminds me of a delivery courier who wears one of my designs while traveling all across Tavat. I didn't charge her much for the outfit either. The exposure she provides for my brand is well worth it. Uh... So, are you a big fan of this story, Farina? Well, uh... It's all right. The pacing of the story is good, but the character relationships could use some work. When I was reading it before, I always felt like some things were left on a rather unsatisfactory note. I have high standards, you know. Ahem, Mr. Xavier. If, hypothetically speaking, I agree to be the director, how much freedom would I have in terms of script revisions and creative interpretation? Oh! Oh, as much freedom as you would need! I wouldn't dare doubt the tastes of Fontaine's greatest star! Good! Then I'm free to alter the script as I see fit? Absolutely no problem! Seems that your crew really can't go on without my care and direction. So, you agree? Yes, I agree. Although the pay is well below what someone of my caliber deserves. A great script calls for a great director. I mustn't let a perfectly good story be ruined due to lack of funds. If you have fine cheese and bread, you wouldn't just let it sit on the counter and get moldy just because you lack an oven, right? Oh, Hydro Archon above! I'm not dreaming, am I? Somebody pinch me. There's no more Hydro Archon, you know. And it's still a little early to celebrate. There's a lot that goes into shooting a film. Although, the trickiest tasks of finalizing the script and casting the actors have already been taken care of, we'll still need to reserve filming locations. Not to say, set up lighting and props. And uh, by the way, since we'll be filming The Two Musketeers, we'll need to find an action choreographer. Ideally, a professional who has actual experience with muskets. Yes, I've thought about this as well. I was hoping that you might know someone who could handle the job. Me? Hmm. If this was before, I could have simply asked Lorand. But it's already been some time since I last talked to her. Navia can also use firearms, but unfortunately, her style is quite different from that of the characters in the story. Could we ask the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol? Oh, you mean the Special Patrol's Musketeers? Yes, that's right. They work with muskets every day. I can't think of anyone more qualified than them. They would be under Nervilat's jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I, uh, don't have any connection with them at all. Hmm, so, in the end, we still have to start by talking to Nervilat. No need to go to all that trouble. I know their Captain Chevras. Oh, you do? Wait, Chiori, how do you know the Captain of the Special Patrol's Musketeers? No particular reason. Running a business means dealing with some trouble from time to time, and she's helped me out on a few occasions. In return, I've helped her handle a few situations in which the Special Patrol couldn't get involved directly. So, we've gotten to know each other over time. Uh, so you're saying been times when the Special Patrol needed a fashion designer to handle a situation? Your work is becoming more and more mysterious. 
It'd be best to keep it that way. Anyway, enough about that. What do you all think about asking the captain to be our musket action choreographer? She sounds professional enough. She is a captain after all. <laughs> I have no objections. But I imagine the special security and surveillance patrol must be busy with their duties. Do you think she'd really have time to help with shooting a film? And then there's the issue of pay. Well, it just so happens that she's also not the kind of person that's just after Mora. As for whether she has time, I'll have to go and ask her first. Then I'll leave that to you. Macaroni's on sale today, so I've got to go. You can just tell me how things went when we discuss tomorrow's plan later. No problem. <coughs> Having Farina join feels like a big boost to our team! Of course! Just wait until the day of our premiere. You'll witness the true power of my name in these lands. <laughs> You'll be so glad I agreed to help. I can guarantee that even the standing tickets will be sold out. I'll be sure to ask some people I know to see if they'd be willing to act as extras. <laughs> Seems like you're finally getting more comfortable with your own reputation now. I didn't ask for the Clapper Loader's commentary, Paimon. Then let's get going. I happen to know where Chevros is today. By the way, I'm curious. If my pay is so low, then what about our two lead actors? Didn't they travel here all the way from Inazuma? Actually, they told us that they see the trip as part of a cultural exchange, so they didn't ask for any pay. What? So is every person into that who doesn't want money gathered here to shoot this film? Don't tell me Chiori isn't being paid either. <laughs> I already knew Xavier from before, and he's also agreed to give my brand some good exposure. It seems the gods have really smiled upon you, Xavier. And that certainly doesn't include me, mind you. All right, this is the place. Hmm. But where's the captain? There's hardly anyone around here. She's over there. The one with an eye patch reading in front of the newsstand. Oh, her! Paima could tell there was something different about her. She seems kinda intimidating. Please wait here for a moment. I'll go fetch her. She's working now, so you might not want to get in her way. Working? But isn't she just standing there and reading a novel? Just trust me. Oh, all right. Let's see what happens then. She already sure is a mysterious person. She claims just to be a fashion designer, but she knows all these powerful people. The Court of Fontaine isn't particularly tolerant of visitors from overseas, so it isn't easy for a foreigner to promote their brand here. Even more so in the competitive world of fashion. Even a local like me just trying to make a film has to face all kinds of challenges. So I can only imagine what Chiori has been through to get where she is today. I'm sure that having more connections has definitely worked in her favor. Reading on the job? detective novel. One main character? No. Multiple. Branching storylines. I see. How's the plot coming along? One of the main characters is about to make a choice that will affect the rest of his life. 
I'd wager he's going to make the wrong choice. <sighs> anyway, to speed things up, there's something I need your help with. You know that doesn't depend on me. It all comes down to what the character chooses. Which is exactly why I'm here to help. <sighs> All right. It appears he made the wrong choice in the end. Halt! Huh? What's going on? Hand over whatever you're holding. Oh, it's just a book. I didn't buy anything else. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind letting me have a look. Excuse me, officer. I don't mind you standing around here, not purchasing anything. But I'd prefer if you didn't disturb my customers. It's bad for business, you know? Don't give me that act. You won't be able to get off so easily either. I am Chevrus, Captain of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I will say this one last time. Hand over whatever you're holding at once. And before you do anything unwise, let me remind you that I'll have you on the ground before you can even think about making a run for it. Uh, all right, all right. I'll give it to you. But please let me say something first. If there's any contraband in that book, then the shopkeeper here is the one who slipped it in. I don't have anything to do with this. Why, you trying to leave me on the hook, huh? You were the one who said you wanted it. Save it for the interrogation room. Take them away, Latelier. What's going on here? One second you're reading a book and the next you're escorting people away! And who are... Oh! Aren't you the traveler who's been all over the papers recently? Chiori, I'm assuming what you wanted to ask me about has to do with them, right? Ah, maybe I can let you in on what's happening then. Now that Vache has been brought to justice, no new shipments of synth will be made and distributed to sellers. The Fontaine guards have been busy collecting the remaining synth still circulating on the market. Thanks to a tip from our reliable source here, this should be the very last batch. Oh, so you were pretending to read a book in order to catch the bad guys! Oh, Paimon almost forgot to introduce ourselves. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler and Xavier! Hey, I'm Chevrez. You probably already heard me introduce myself, so I won't bother repeating it. Yeah, why didn't you make a move as soon as you had the chance? Were you worried that my intel wasn't accurate? No, I wanted to see if the shopkeeper would turn himself in first. All he had to do was come up to me and say that he didn't know where the synth had come from. If he did that, then I wouldn't have had to press charges on him. He had the whole day to turn the synth over to Chevrus. But instead, the moment I came up and blocked Chevrus' line of sight, he took the opportunity to sell it off. Yep, he made the wrong choice, even though the right choice was right there in front of him. But you knew they wouldn't make the right choice. Yeah, I knew. I was just hoping I'd be wrong for once. Eh. <laughs> Enough about that, though. What did you want to ask me about? Oh, you see, it's like this. The Two Musketeers. You certainly have a good eye for a story. So what do you need me to do? Just be the action choreographer for the actors? Yes, that's right. I want to make sure we get all the details right. I want the actor's posture and understanding of firearms to be as realistic as possible. However, I'm afraid this work will require a bit of your time, since you'll have to be present whenever we're filming. Also, as for the pay... No need to say any more. I'll join. Huh? Just like that? Uh, what Bullchecker is really saying is, if you want to fight the Oni King, you have to go through Sky Cleaving White Iron Lavender Melon first. Really? You're willing to help us with our humble film project? 
Sure, it's no big deal. As I said, we've wrapped up our investigation here, so I don't have any other tasks on my plate for the moment. Besides, I personally really like this novel. I even have the collector's edition at home. Stories where justice prevails over evil never get old for me. Then we've got a deal? Yes, I'll see you on set tomorrow. Oh my! I can hardly believe it! I should tell Lady Farina immediately. Oh, and I must tell the prop manager and lighting technician to get everything ready! We start filming tomorrow! Calm down, Xavier. The film is going to take more than just a day to finish. Still, I should also head back now and start preparing the actors' costumes and makeup. Alright, guess that's it for today then! Traveler, Paimon, please stay for a moment. I have something to tell you. Then I'll take Xavier back. Poor thing. He's so excited that he can't even walk straight anymore. <sighs> I don't want to spend our first day fishing our producer out of the fountain. He'd better. What did you want to tell us, Chevres? Have you read The Two Musketeers? The story is about a pair of children born into the household of a baron, and their struggle to survive together and take revenge for their mother. They were raised at the baron's estate, where their mother worked as a maid. The two were illegitimate children that the baron had with the maid, so they were never treated well by anyone. One day, upon returning home, they found their mother had been murdered and left dead on the floor. It was quite evident that the culprits were the other members of the Baron's household, who never had any kind words to say to them. However, the Baron was able to exert his influence and keep the whole thing under wraps. The mother's death was eventually deemed as a suicide, and there was no chance of bringing her murderers to justice. The two siblings decided to flee and someday avenge their mother. Many years later, Members of the Baron's family suddenly started turning up dead one after the other, all killed by gunshot. A rainbow rose was found on each of the victims' bodies, being the flower that the kid's mother liked best. The Baron believed that the mother's soul had come to take vengeance on him, so he lived in fear each day. But it was actually those two siblings who had fled all those years ago. They relied on each other to survive and trained day and night, eventually becoming adept musketeers. They used all of their abilities to collect evidence and clues before executing their plan and exacting revenge on the Baron. Their actions let the truth behind their mother's death be known to all. That's quite an exhilarating story! Yep, the Baron got what he deserved for his evil deeds, and justice was able to prevail. It was just the kind of story I enjoy. Oh, so is that why you were so willing to join our crew, Chevras? You could say it was one of the reasons. Oh, you mean there were other reasons too? I've read the reports about you. Whether it was at the trials or when you lent your hand to resolve our nation's crisis, you've shown that you've got a strong sense of justice, as well as a great mind for deductions. Yes, you're as sharp as I expected. It seems you've experienced many similar situations before. There's been a recent murder case involving muskets. The perpetrator's methods appear to be very similar to what is described in the novel. Huh. Really? But Paima didn't see anything about that in today's papers. The Marachose Phantom hasn't yet released any information to the public, because the investigation is currently at a standstill. The murderer is extremely cautious. A murder involving firearms? But not that many people use those in Fontaine, right? Impossible. We perform a routine inspection of our firearms and ammo reserves every day. If one of the weapons had been fired, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Besides, I trust the members of my platoon. However... Well, that's all I can disclose about the case today. Huh? What do you mean? I hope you all can go back and get some shut-eye. You can decide tomorrow whether or not you'd like to join the investigation with me. 
I'm aware this might not be the ideal time to add more to your plate, but the more capable people we have, the better the chances that justice will prevail. Carrying out investigations isn't actually supposed to be our responsibility. Our job is to apprehend the perpetrators. Finding them is really up to the Marachose Phantom. You could say I'm taking part in the investigation out of personal interest. I don't want people to see muskets in a negative way, and also, I'm concerned about the similarity between the crimes and the story. You mean, they might be connected somehow? I suspect so. Just to make myself clear, this is not an order, nor is it a deal of any kind. It's a request, nothing more. If you two have any interest in the case after we finish filming tomorrow and are willing to assist me, then I would be most grateful. Hmm. What do you think, Traveler? Yeah, you're right. Paimon's getting a little tired, too. We've really been hustling all day. You'd better head back and get some rest. It's good to keep a calm mind, especially when you're about to make an important decision. Otherwise, when the moment comes, you might end up like that shopkeeper and not even realize that the right choice is right there in front of you. said yesterday afternoon went well. Yeah, and how about you, Ayaka? What were you up to yesterday? After we split up, Ayato went to see Udex Nervilet at the Palais Marmonia. I was originally thinking of going with him, but he said he could manage it himself. He told me to go see the sights around Fontaine and to enjoy the local culture. So I rode the aqua bus with Yoimiya and visited the opera house on Erinias Island. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what we saw there! Two mechanical puppets that were dancing together! You've already seen them, right? Yeah, yeah, those two! Amazing, aren't they? We sat and watched for quite a while. It was mesmerizing. Like we could keep watching them forever. Oh, it was the same for us the first time we saw them, too! Afterwards, we went swimming at the beach! Well, diving, to be exact. It was the first time I ever breathed underwater! I held Ayaka's hand and we counted down together. Three, two, one, and then... Splash! We were beneath the waves! At first, I didn't dare to open my mouth. But once I couldn't hold my breath any longer, I decided to take a big breath in. <laughs> Turns out the water wasn't as salty as I imagined. It didn't really taste like anything at all. Before I knew it, I was breathing like normal down there. It was an amazing feeling. Ayaka said I was too nervous and needed to loosen my grip. She got used to everything way faster than I did. I knew that the Traveler could do it, so I had no doubt we could do it too. That helped me feel at ease as soon as we dove in. The underwater world in Fontaine truly is beautiful. I love seeing the Romaritime flowers blossoming underwater, like little candles lighting up the streets at night. Yeah, and there were so many creatures that we've never seen in Inazuma. Like those fish that shimmer like a sword blade. Whoosh! Oh, and those big fish that call when they see people. Ooh. Oh, you mean hunters, rays, and blubber beasts? <laughs> I just love the name Blubber Beast. 
<sighs> Just wait till Pops and the others hear about this. They probably won't believe a word I say. <laughs> Yoi Mia was down there for quite a while. It was dark before we finally rode the Aquabus back to the city. I figured she'd want to sleep in today. <laughs> yeah, even I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get up. <sighs> I still felt like I was drifting in the waves when I went to sleep last night. But as soon as I woke up today, I remembered that we'd all be shooting a film together and I was ready to go. Speaking of the film, where's everybody else? My brother and Xavier were speaking to the restaurant owner about using the place as a filming location. They should be here soon. As for the others, they... We're here. Please excuse my tardiness. I just finished the Special Patrol's six-mile morning jog. Wait, six miles? <sighs> I'm so tired. I heard you all chatting, so I decided to come down. I sure could use some of that endless energy everyone else has. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Mm. Can someone fetch me a cup of coffee? More milk, hold the sugar. Sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. No, you can't go anywhere. Please, have a seat over here so I can get started on your makeup. Ugh, the last thing I want is coffee stains on my costumes. I can get the coffee! It's the perfect job for an assistant! Ugh, so much energy. Seriously, what's her secret? Oh, Yoimiya's always like that. But you sure look exhausted, Farina. It's because you're not used to waking up so early, huh? Of course not. I spent the whole night reading the novel from cover to cover, marking sections that either need to be omitted or adapted. Wow, Paimon didn't expect you to be so thorough. <laughs> well, I was the biggest star in all of Fontaine, after all. It takes more than just a pretty face to earn a reputation like that. I know how to get serious when the situation calls for it. I went all out when I was acting as an Archon, so why wouldn't I do the same for my own life? Here's your coffee, Director Farina. Thank you. Ah, the sound of being called director and the aroma of coffee <laughs> feels almost as refreshing as hearing the birds chirping in the morning. Oh, it seems everyone has managed to arrive on time. We've reached an agreement with the restaurant owner. We are free to use the second floor to shoot our film. He is really looking forward to our film, and hopes that providing his restaurant as a filming location will attract more customers. Well then, Mr. Xavier, I'll leave the rest to you. Okay, thanks! First, I'd like to introduce our new members. This is our prop manager, Veronique. She'll be in charge of all the films, props, and items. And this is Bono, our lighting technician. He'll be in charge of lighting and illumination to set up each scene's atmosphere. Wow. Sure feels like we have some real professionals joining the crew now. First of all, please allow me to first express my sincerest gratitude to everyone in the crew. When my investor informed me yesterday that he wouldn't be able to provide the funds, I really thought that this was the nail in the coffin for this film. I had no idea that I'd find so many people willing to help me on such short notice. Thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. No need to be so cordial, Mr. Xavier. We're all honored to be a part of this. Your works made a profound impression on me when I saw them back in Inazuma. I am sure that someday, this film will be remembered as a prime example of cultural exchange between Fontaine and Inazuma. Yes. The story is the reason I agreed to join. I can't bear to even imagine what this film would look like without the very best director. Anyway, I would like to make a promise to everyone. 
that as the producer of this film, I'll do whatever I can to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. This is not just my film. It also embodies the thoughts and feelings of every person here, as well as the endless effort we are about to pour into it. <laughs> so, without further ado, the Two Musketeers will officially begin filming now! You may take it from here, Director Farina. All right. Listen up, everyone. The first scene takes place when the two young musketeers are living at the Baron's home, still unaware of all that is about to happen to them. We'll need props and lighting to set the scene. Our lead actors can go get their makeup done, and extras, please take this time to go over your positions. Whoa, seems Farina's really kicking things into gear as the director. Is everyone clear? I don't want anyone traipsing around the set like umbrella finches. All right, cameras will start rolling as soon as the set is ready. Let's make a film that'll make some serious waves in Fontaine. Uh, not the kind of waves that drown people. I mean, the good kind of waves. <laughs> uh, seems like she's still a bit traumatized by that. Anyway, let's go see if there's anything we can do to help. Ayaka has mentioned you to me before. She said that you two were great friends when you were kids. No talking. I'm thinking about how to do your eyeshadow. Ah, yes. To help me really look the part. To achieve a more young and naive look for this scene. Are you saying the wrinkles around my eyes are too deep? You just have too much of a calculating look in your eyes. <laughs> You sure don't mince your words. It seems you really haven't changed much. Quiet. How about here? Uh, a little more to the left. You got it! Hey, Yoimiya! Do you need a hand? No, no, I'm fine. You know, doing the lighting is kind of like designing a fireworks show. It's interesting to imagine what kind of atmosphere the lights will create. I heard that the Traveler will be operating the camera and Paimon will be the clapper loader, right? <laughs> Those rules are just perfect for the two of you. Really? Is that because it'll be easy for Paimon to hold the clapper board while flying? Well, sure, there's that, but that's not exactly what I meant. I just think that after all your journeys together, you two must have developed a super close bond and just naturally know how to work with each other. If I'm not mistaken, the director will want the cameras rolling as soon as the clapperboard goes clack. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's amazing to see the magic behind filmmaking. You and me, uh, we need lights over there too. I've got to get back to work. Chat with you later. Oh, it's exciting to see so many people working together to bring the film to life. Seems like Yamiya's really getting into it. But she was right. We do have a super close bond, don't we? <laughs> Paimon's really happy to hear that. So, this is a real musket? No, it's just a prop weapon. Not bad. Have you seen a real musket before? Only in books and newspapers. I made this one based on the relative shape and proportions I saw in reference images. When we're filming, some special gunpowder will be applied around the muzzle, which will help create the flash and smoke effects of a real gun being fired. 
which means it'll be up to the actors to portray the recoil. <laughs> That's right. The sound effects for gunshots will also be added in post-production. Thank you, Veronique. I think I know where to start now. However, the musket's gears and firing pin could still use some work. Adding some wear on the metallic components will make them appear more realistic. Also, be sure to rub the muskets with some oil each time before we start shooting. That'll give the impression that the firearms have been well-maintenanced. Good point. You seem to know a lot, Miss Chevres. I assume you use these types of firearms on a regular basis? Yes, I perform routine maintenance on my weapons every day. Just like we as people need to eat and sleep, muskets need to be cleaned and maintained. I also perform similar care for my sword every day, and familiarize myself with its shape and weight, to the point where it feels like a natural extension of my body. Yes. This way, our weapons will never betray us in the heat of battle. Yes, well said. It seems we have the same philosophy on this topic. Oh, sounds like they found a common interest to talk about. Though these props differ from the muskets I use, I can still give you some pointers. Good. I look forward to your instruction. First and foremost, never point the weapon at anyone, regardless of whether it's a real or prop weapon or whether you're holding it or it's on the table. This holds for any time when you're not actively engaging an enemy. Okay, understood. When aiming the musket, extend your arm so that it's level with your shoulder and use your eye to look down the weapon's sights. Like this? Not bad. Now, try saying your lines. <clears throat> this is the end of the road for you. Good. Now turn your body a little. That way, you'll give your enemy less of a target to work with. And relax your shoulders. Here, allow me to demonstrate. This is the end of the road for you. Huh. Excuse me, Miss Chiori. Director Farina, there's something I wish to discuss with you. Oh? What is it? Like this? Yes, much better. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I do see your point. But are you sure you wish to do this? I believe it would be most fitting. Well, if you insist. All right, I understand. <clears throat> Miss Ayaka, Miss Chevrist, could the two of you please come over here? Huh? What's going on? Are we gonna start filming now? Let's go see. What is it? I have a question for you, Miss Chevrist. Would you be willing to play the role of a musketeer? Uh, what? To clarify, I would like to turn over my role to Miss Chevres. But, brother... Don't worry, Ayaka. I actually view this as a good thing. I was becoming troubled trying to set aside some time to speak to the staff at the Palais Mermonia. I would like to have some conversations about the cultural exchange between our two countries, and I've heard that the bureaucratic process here can get... rather complicated. Now, I will be able to focus on my work. Besides, you also know that I'm not really one for public performances. Are you really sure? From a director's point of view, I also felt like the relationship between the two musketeers in the original story could be improved. The older brother in the story plays the lead role with his overbearing character, but this causes his character to overshadow that of his sister, and the theme of the two supporting and relying on each other isn't conveyed very well. But, if we were to change the siblings to two sisters of a similar age, then that aspect of the story might come through more clearly. Also, I've seen you instructing Ayaka. That cold and dignified personality is exactly what we need for the older musketeer. Of course, even with all these insights, the decision should still be made by Miss Chevres. Uh... Chevres mentioned that she really likes the story, right? Paima bets that she'll take the role. Alright, I'll take the role. 
Good! It's decided then. I'll get started on making edits to the script. We'll also need to make some immediate adjustments to the lighting, props, and costumes. Oh, I have a feeling that our adaptation will be even better than the original story. You're doing a great favor for me, Miss Chevrus. You have my gratitude. Don't mention it. I like this character, so if anything, I should be the one thanking you. Well, since my brother is the one who brought up the idea, I suppose there's no need to worry. Let's go, Miss Chevrus. I look forward to working with you. Please, just call me Chevrus. Seems like you're really going out of your way to solve the problem I was having with your makeup. Surely you jest, Chiori. I assure you that I was mostly motivated by a desire to spend more time on formal business. Oh, come on. You really think I'd buy that? According to what I've heard from Ayaka, her brother is someone who can juggle ten different matters at the same time. I'm sure you have other reasons for backing out. Perhaps. Ayaka always said she wanted to go out and see more of the world, just like the Traveler. But I feel that she needs not only to see other nations, but also to make some different kinds of friends. I think it would be harder for her to make new connections with me constantly by her side. I would like to give her some space. Alright, go on. Spoil her some more. Ayato! It's too bad you're stepping down from the role. Paimon really wanted to see you act as a musketeer. <laughs> no need to poke fun at me. I'd wager that you also felt that I wasn't the best candidate for the role. <laughs> it's a little hard for Paimon to imagine you saying those lines. Yes, I've made an appointment to meet some people from the Palais Mermonia. Now, I will have some more time to prepare. Traveler, get the camera ready! Paimon, get the clapperboard! Actors, to your positions! We're about to start shooting the first scene. <laughs> Go on now. And please take good care of Ayaka. Yep, don't worry. Thank you. I look forward to seeing the film when it's finished. All right. Now that we're all here, let me help set the scene for everyone. The first scene takes place when our two main characters are still living at the Baron's estate. They've been ostracized and verbally abused by others in the household, but they still have no idea why. We want to capture how naive and innocent they are, despite their pain. Chevrus will be playing the role of the older sister, Tulip, and Ayaka will be the younger sister, Iris. Be sure to get close-ups of the main characters at the right moment. Silence on the set! Lights! Camera! Action! Let's go! Tulip, Mother's been out for quite a while now. Hmm. Perhaps she went to pick some flowers on the way home. You know how she loves flowers. Iris, Tulip, I'm home! Mother! You were out for so long, we were beginning to worry about you. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm back now, safe and sound. Here, I brought your favorite treat, apple turnovers. Mother, what are those bruises on your hand? Huh? What bruises? Oh, I must have bumped into something while I was working yesterday. But... I didn't notice them this morning. Then perhaps they're from when I accidentally tripped when I was out just now. By the way, did you have fun playing at home? <sighs> What's the matter, Iris? Well, we've realized that no one really wants to play with us. They even took Iris's doll and spat at us. <sighs> And they even called us names. They said we were... Shh. It's all right. Don't worry. <sighs> Girls, listen to me. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Don't listen to them. 
No one can define you with such words. You both have wonderful lives ahead of you. Just like your names, you will both blossom like beautiful flowers. Maybe your time to blossom hasn't quite come yet, but one day, you two will bloom more beautifully than anything else. Don't let the soil you're in now ruin your future beauty, understand? My dear daughters. And cut! Not bad. The actor's emotions were all on point. Let's keep that take. Also, if our clapper loader could avoid shouting at the start of the scene next time... Oh, I uh, got it! <sighs> Great. I was a little worried that my nerves would get the better of me. What about you, Chevras? I felt fine. The lines weren't too difficult at all. Seems like Farina must have adapted the role nicely. <laughs> You two were great. I couldn't tell it was your first time acting in a film. You should have more confidence. Thank you for your encouragement. Positions, everyone! We'll move on to the next scene after we try a few more camera angles. This scene is when our two characters return home, only to discover their mother has been murdered. Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! Mother, we're back! Mother? <gasps> What's wrong, Tulip? Iris, stay away! Huh? Why? What's... <gasps> Mother! Mother! She's... Huh? There's poison in this cup. Huh? I could have sworn I've seen this kind of cup before. <sighs> Those aristocrats. They didn't even try to cover up their actions. <gasps> Iris, we need to leave this place. Leave? But now that Mother is gone, where can we even go? Anywhere. All I know is that we can't stay in this house. But are we just going to let them get away with this? We'll have our revenge, I promise you. Just not right now. Come on, let's go. No, wait. We can't just leave Mother here like this. At least... At least let me leave this rose with her. That's why we went out in the first place. To buy her this flower. All right. Goodbye, Mother. We'll avenge you. Someday. And cut! Beautiful! Great performance! Oh my, you're so amazing, Ayaka! And were those real tears I saw? How did you do it? I was surprised too. Thank you for the kind compliments. Actually, as soon as Director Farina said action, I told myself not to think about anything. I just felt the weight of the moment, and became the character. It's quite similar to practicing the art of the sword. You clear your mind and focus only on what's happening in front of you. Ayaka's performance was amazing. Have I discovered an acting prodigy? Pipe down, everyone! We need to move on to the next scene! Board. Hmm. How do you feel, 
Traveler. Is your arm sore from holding the camera all day? Good work, you two. You too, Chevres. You were quite the actress today. I've read this novel many times before. I have a good grasp of my character's mindset. Anyway, do you remember my request from yesterday? Oh, right! We were having so much fun that Paimon nearly forgot! You have a case where the murders seem really similar to the cases in the novel, right? So, uh... How are they similar, exactly? In the story, the main characters grow up to become two musketeers, always using their guns to carry out their revenge. And on each of the victims, they place a rainbow rose as a signal that they've returned. Yes, that's correct. We found rainbow roses just like in the novel. <laughs> Seems like you're connecting the dots now. Oh, that does sound pretty concerning. Especially after seeing the script today! Oh, now Paimon can't stop wondering what kind of ulterior motive the murderer might have! Uh, what do you think, Traveler? You're smart! Paimon wants to hear your thoughts! Good! On behalf of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, thank you for your dedication to justice. There's no time to lose. We should start investigating right away. Follow me. Huh? Right now? Tired. The most valuable intel always comes after nightfall. They are like small, remote islands in the middle of the sea. If you don't stay vigilant, you will pass right by them in the fog. That's how one of my favorite books always puts it, at least. So where are we going right now? Let's start by checking out some workshops that sell mechanical components. If the culprit is making their own weapons, it's very likely that they'll visit those sort of places. Welcome to Le Show's Clockwork Workshop. How can I help you? Hello. I'd like to know if anyone has purchased some special components lately. Special components? Sorry, could you be more specific? I mean the kind of components that aren't typically used for clockwork toys, but for firearms. Huh? For firearms? No, no, we don't sell those sort of things here. Don't misunderstand. I'm not here to cause any trouble. We are merely investigating a case, and we're hoping that you could cooperate. Well, to be completely honest, I'm not even sure what kind of components that would entail. Has anyone ever purchased components here as an individual, rather than on behalf of an organization? We have a lot of customers who buy toys, but those who buy components are all regular customers who buy in bulk on behalf of their organization. Hmm, is that so? I understand. Thank you for your cooperation. You're welcome. It's the least I can do. Hey, Chevrus. Run out of oil for your musket again? Hello, Estelle. I want to know if anyone has come to your shop recently to order some firearm components. Oh, is this another case? Hmm, let me think. I don't think so. Some people have requested that I make some prop guns for the Fontanalia Film Festival, but I refused all of those requests. Oh, why is that? Because there's no profit! I only make things here that can do some real heavy lifting. 
I don't have the energy to make some new molds just for the festival. Then has anybody come specifically looking for mechanical components? Well, hmm. I usually sell off my scrap to the Fleuve Sandre. I don't typically give them to one specific person. I understand. Thanks for your cooperation. Don't mention it. Always happy to have the Musketeers patronage. Seems like we haven't found any leads to go off yet. Yeah, unfortunately. <sighs> Alright. Let's head to Fliv Sandra next. Huh? Are you sure? Uh, people might not be so thrilled to see the captain of the special patrol there. You think so, huh? Then I guess you don't know. Huh? Know what? That I grew up in Fliv Sandra. I'd like to ask some questions. I don't know anything. Don't worry, I'm not here to arrest anybody. You say that now. It's the truth. Here, take this as my guarantee. Wait, did Paimon just see what she thinks she saw? Is the captain of the special patrol bribing a citizen? Seems you're different from the other guards. What do you want to know? Have you heard anything related to muskets in Fleuve Sandra lately? Anything at all? Muskets, huh? All I know is that about two weeks ago, we started hearing some loud noises at night. So loud that it's been waking me up. Were they gunshots? Possibly. It's hard to tell around here. Someone's house collapsing, a pipe exploding somewhere, it's all the same. But the noises I'm talking about definitely happened after I fell asleep. Do you know where the noises were coming from? I don't remember clearly. <sighs> Is it that you don't remember, or that you need to think about it some more? You tell me. Then please, think about it some more. <gasps> She's giving her even more, Mora! The noises came from the end of the Southern Waterway. I came out and had a look for myself when I wasn't sleeping well, but I didn't dare get too close. That's all I know. All right, I'll take your word for it. Thanks for the pot de fruit. Uh, uh. No need to be surprised. I grew up here, remember? I know how to get people around here to talk. My apologies, I'm all out of sweets. Though I do have some other tempting snacks in my custody. Fries, fried chicken, and even onion rings. Uh, but taking care of junk food is my responsibility. You're better off sticking to your normal, nutritious diet. Now then, let's keep going. It's been a while, Tetro. Please, just get on with your request. I want to know if you've heard anybody talking about muskets lately. Information isn't free, you know. I've heard that bandits have been extremely active in the countryside recently, and they've been affecting the delivery of goods to Poisson. I can allocate some more manpower to help out with that problem. What do you say? <laughs> You're still as helpful as ever. 
One of our men got drunk at dinner about a month ago and lost his gun. Three days later, it turned up in the corner here. What's weird about that? He just forgot where he put it, right? This is Fleuve Sandra, my friend. Anything of value left in the tavern won't ever make it to the next day. But that gun turned out to be an exception. It didn't get any new wear and tear on it, and didn't even appear to have been fired. We were quite mystified as to what could have happened. I suspect it came back because the weapon was already known to the guards. You mean, a criminal was afraid the Marushose Phantom would use the shot marks to track them down? Maybe. But if that's the case, the culprit really took great care to avoid getting caught. I didn't say anything about a criminal. In Fluff Sandra, knowing who was killed is as easy as knowing what clothes you're wearing today. It's the guy living in the east side, isn't it? I've never liked him. Every time he's here, he just orders a drink and sits there with a nasty look in his eyes. So, who was the one who lost the gun in the first place? Eh, don't bother. Even if you ask, he wouldn't admit to owning a gun to some strangers. Not to mention the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. He's right. I know you grew up here, Shavras. Even though you're on good terms with the Spina, you've still been gone too long. Not many people know you here now, and a lot of people don't like the Special Patrol. I know. So take my advice and don't show your face too much around here. It's for your own safety. I'll come and go as I please, and I'm afraid I'll be appearing more often due to my work. All right. Don't say I didn't warn you. Yes, but have a closer look, Paimon. Hmm? Even though somebody has purposefully tried to clean them up, these are obviously marks from musket bullets. In other words, someone was here trying to improve their shot. They were using the barrels and bottles for target practice. <gasps> Could it have been the killer? Your guess is as good as mine. Although many people at Fleuve Sandra own guns, few hide the fact from others. And even fewer would go to such lengths to hide markings from practice shots. Anyway, let's go. There might be more to this. Seems like that's all we'll be able to uncover for today. Paimon feels like we managed to learn a lot more here than up on the surface. Yes. Assuming that everything we found is indeed connected to our suspect, then their timeline was probably something like this. A month ago, our suspect found a gun and took it home to disassemble it. Once he'd figured out its mechanics, he brought it back. In the following weeks, he used some parts to create his own makeshift musket and took it to the Fleuve Sandra for target practice. Then, a few days ago, he found his target and carried out the murder. Once the deed was done, he left a rainbow rose on the body, just like the scene in the novel. Hmm. That all makes sense to Paimon, but we're still no closer to figuring out the killer's identity! The deceased was a resident of Fleuve Sandra. It's said that he was a poor, solitary man. Yeah, that's also something I'm trying to figure out. If we are indeed following the novel, and there's a story behind the murder, then this murder should be an act of vengeance. But according to our investigation, the deceased didn't have any enemies. He was no saint, but no one's heard of a rival who hated him enough to shoot him dead much less care to leave a rose on his body. What message is the killer trying to convey? And to whom exactly? We've thoroughly investigated that possibility. He claims to have spent the whole day at the Opera House on the day of the murder, and the staff there have confirmed his account. Okay, so he has an alibi. 
Not only that, he lacks a credible motive as well. He has a family of his own, and both of his parents are still alive. I've looked into his records. He was adopted at the age of six, and all the proper procedures were followed. There are also records of him at an orphanage before then. In the story, the mother of the two musketeers was murdered after the children turned ten. Of course, he could have changed the children's ages, but I don't want to assume anything without evidence. More importantly, I've also had a chat with him in person. He didn't seem like the kind of person who would pull the trigger to kill a man. Then, what should we do now? We have all this new information, but it doesn't help us move forward! Investigations take time. I didn't expect us to catch the culprit in just a single day. How about this? Let's spend the next few days filming with the crew. We can continue the investigation once we're done with the film. I'm sure that given time, new leads will present themselves. Wait, but weren't you saying Intel is like small, remote islands in the middle of the sea just a moment ago? Wouldn't you just miss them if you were to stop looking? Ah, but the book had more than one reference to the islands, Paimon. Oh? What else did it say then? As long as you spend enough time sailing through the fog, you'll eventually come across an island. Everyone, we're looking to wrap with our two main ladies today. I can already smell our success. <laughs> what do you mean, looking to wrap? Oh, aren't you the expert now? This upcoming scene is the two musketeers' final confrontation with the Baron. There will be quite a bit of action, but no choreography beyond what we've already rehearsed. Anyway, get ready! Lights! Camera! Action! The view is beautiful tonight. It reminds me of that fateful night ten years ago. Hmm, and now that I've said it, I can even make out the faint fragrance of herbal tea in the air. Enough, villain! It's time that you pay for the death of our mother! My dear Iris, have you forgotten your manners? How can you speak like this to your own father? <sighs> I'd sooner swallow all of my teeth than call you father! What did I expect? Seems the daughters have turned out to be just as obstinate as their foolish mother! In this world, Mora and status is everything! She thought she could blackmail me using her children and force me to grant her recognition and concessions? Ah, how naive can a woman be? Mother never asked a single thing of you. All she wished was for us to live a peaceful life, just like the others. It was you who personally brewed the poison of prejudice and sent Mother to her death. Compared to that deadly poison, the two bullets that will soon pierce through your heart will be like sweet mercy. <laughs> and that's exactly why I said you're just as naive as her. Did you really think two muskets would be enough to defeat me? So let's see. What is stronger, Mora and power, or the two muskets in your hands? Get them! Too weep! They're 
Too many of them! It'll be okay. We'll cover each other, Iris. And Mother will be watching over us, too. You've lost. <laughs> to think I'd lose to my own two kids. We are no children of yours. And we'll never call that place our home. <laughs> then tell me, what did you do all this for? You lost your mother and will soon kill your father as well. What will you gain in the end, other than sentences for your crimes? We will gain our long-awaited justice. <sighs> it's over. <sighs> Finally, it's over. So, where will you go now, Tulip? I'm not too sure, Iris. Maybe somewhere with lots of flowers? After all, Mother always did love going where the blossoms were. What about you? I... want to go visit Mother's grave. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Huh? Tulip, look! What is it? It's Mother's favorite! The Rainbow Rose! Look! It's blooming again! Excellent! That was beyond mesmerizing! <laughs> Even I didn't expect this scene to go so well. And we got it in a single take! <laughs> Alright, everyone! We've got a wrap for Tulip and Iris. Congratulations, Ayaka and Chevrois! Thank you. I didn't expect our parts to wrap so quickly. I wish I could savor the experience for just a bit longer. <laughs> Paimon totally understands. Paimon's not ready to say goodbye to the clapperboard either. Filming has really been a lot of fun. You were great too, Chevrois! The way you said, long-awaited justice, it gave Paimon chills! That is indeed my favorite line in the whole book. I still remember trying to act it out in my room the first few times I read it. Whoa, Paimon would have never guessed you're that type. Who doesn't like stories where the guilty are punished and justice prevails over evil? Don't forget, I'm the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Captain, I have something urgent to report. Please excuse me, everyone. I'll be back in just a moment. It's okay, don't worry about us! Oh? Was she whisked away by work already? Mm, I was just about to tell her how great she did. It seemed like some urgent official business. <sighs> Then perhaps we should thank the stars that we were able to wrap both of your parts so quickly today. Switching around the filming schedule would have been a real pain. Anyway, I actually came over to let everyone know that we're all done for today. You can go home and get some rest. And one last thing, Miss Ayaka. Your acting skills today were immaculate as always. Are you sure you won't consider taking up full-time acting? See, I just happen to know this great troupe that's still looking for a lead actress. Thank you for your kind words, Director Farina. Unfortunately, there are still many matters that I have to take care of back home at the Yashiro Commission. I cannot remain in Fontaine to pursue an acting career. Nevertheless, I will make sure to treasure this incredible opportunity in my heart. Oh, that's a shame. But I understand. Just let me know if you ever change your mind. I believe it's also about time for me to take my leave. But hopefully I'll see you on set over the next few days. 
even though my part's wrapped, I'd still like to swing by and help out the crew. See you tomorrow, Traveler and Paimon. What should we do next? Maybe we'll go investigate the case some more with Shivers today. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Huh? W where are we going? You could say that our ship has finally chanced upon one of those small remote islands of intel. Affirmative. It wasn't anything conclusive, but it should show us a clear way forward. Have you ever heard of someone by the name of Emily? Oh, you mean that famous perfumer? She's a good friend of mine. She's lent me her aid several times in the past to resolve some difficult cases. After I discovered the rainbow rose at the scene of the murder, I sent it to her. After all, she's probably the foremost expert on flowers and scents in all of Fontaine. And then? There was nothing remarkable about the flower or the trace amounts of soil left on it. But according to Emily, the rainbow rose left by the killer was derived from a very rare cultivar. Huh. Paimon didn't know that there were different varieties of rainbow rose. Paimon just thought they grew everywhere in the wild. Flowers that are deliberately cultivated will always show some different features from those that bloom in the wild. We already knew that the rose left at the scene belonged to a special cultivar, but with Emily's expertise, we were able to pinpoint the place where it was first picked from. Oh, Paimon gets it now! So whoever first planted that rainbow rose was probably the killer! Precisely. And after we checked what we learned against some sales records from the past, we discovered that there's only one person in all of Fontaine who could grow and sell this specific cultivar. Uh, really? And who is it? It's the novelist. But didn't you say he had an alibi? To be clear, I haven't changed my mind about him. I still don't think he was the one who pulled the trigger. However, that doesn't mean the true culprit never visited him at his home or never purchased a rainbow rose from his garden. Whatever the case, we will have to confirm a number of things with him. So you mean the next place we need to go is... Yes, we're going to pay him a visit at his home. That should be his house. There are so many Gardamex stationed around the place. Uh, that's pretty unusual, right? According to what he told me last time we spoke, he hired them so he won't be harassed or disturbed. Huh. So there are a lot of flowers in his garden, but... Paimon doesn't think we'll be able to pick one without alerting the Gardamex. Right. Which is exactly why I think there has to be a special connection between him and the killer. So, should we knock? Just wait here for now. I'd like to take care of a number of those Gardamex first. But they're so far away! How are you planning to do that? Don't forget, Paimon. I'm actually the real-life captain of the Musketeers. <laughs>
All clear. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait! Paima's a little nervous now that we know he could be the killer. <laughs> Can we go over our plan of action again? I'll go knock on the door and make sure it's safe inside. Once we're sure that we're in the clear, I'll ask him to come with us for a quick round of questioning at the guard's headquarters. But can't we just arrest him? We still have no evidence that he's the killer, or that he lent the killer any direct aid. Still, it would be appreciated if you could pick a rainbow rose from his garden for me while I'm talking to him. It'll help the Mara Shose Phantom confirm Emily's theory. Sure, no problem. Just be careful, Chevras. Excuse me, Mr. Baptiste, are you home? Who could it be at this hour? Oh, it's you, Officer Chevras. Would you mind accompanying me to the guard's headquarters, Mr. Baptiste? We would like to ask you some questions about a case. Oh, is it still regarding the murder case from before? I cannot confirm or deny that at this time. So it is then. Listen. I need you to come with me, Mr. Baptiste. Uh, Miss Chavras, I'll save you the trouble. Oh, and you two over there? There's no need for you to pick my flowers either. It's not time for them to bloom yet. Oh! Uh, okay. By saving me the trouble, you mean... I will confess, I was the killer. Huh? He... he just admitted he's guilty! Please relax, everyone. I'm not armed. The musket you're looking for has been buried in my backyard. Then it's my responsibility to inform you, Mr. Baptiste, that everything you say right now will be used as evidence for the inevitable trial. Yes, I am perfectly aware of that. I must say, I hate this feeling. Oh? Is it because I confessed? Or because you've been proven wrong? Both, I suppose. For the same reason as the one I wrote out in my novel, of course. I did it to exact revenge. Hmm. I know you haven't figured out the link between the two of us. Had you done so, I'd have been taken away to the headquarters a long time ago. But that won't stop me from always remembering his grotesque face. After all, he was the one who killed my mother. Your mother is still healthy and well. You know, I was adopted as a child. I was referring to my birth mother. That was never recorded in the orphanage's records. Please forgive a six-year-old child for concocting some lies to protect himself after watching his mother die right in front of him. So, your novel, it was like a record of your life? No, of course not. It was a work of fiction with many embellished parts. But, I am indeed the illegitimate son of a wealthy and influential man who abused his power to murder my mother. That part was a hundred percent real. But the man you killed didn't have a mora to his name. He was a hired assassin. An irredeemable beast who sank his fangs into a defenseless woman just for a few bags of mora. But if that's really the truth, you wouldn't be telling us any of this now. You still haven't managed to take revenge against your father, the true mastermind behind it all. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear that kind of thing from the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I'm simply skeptical about your motives. It's simple, really. 
I've grown tired of everything and don't want to shoulder this burden anymore. You may have considered me too soft to pull the trigger. Well, as it turns out, you are exactly right. I've become overwhelmed by the aftermath of the murder. So you're going to call a stop to your revenge, just like that? The true mastermind is too rich and too powerful for me. I've accepted that I will never be able to avenge my mother alone. And so what? The characters in your book never gave up. Now, Officer Shavras, I'm the one who has killed a man, aren't I? Are you trying to convince me to commit another crime? What's your father's name? How do you plan to prove the veracity of all of your claims? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to speak with you privately. Sure. Why don't we speak privately at the guard's headquarters? No, it has to be here. I must ensure that we won't be overheard. <sighs> Fine. Let's talk here. When I said, won't be overheard, I meant by anyone. I would like to speak with you and you alone. Thanks. I appreciate it. Please stay safe, Chevres. All right. Let's hear it. Will you really believe what I'm about to say? Well, that depends on what you're going to tell me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Then listen closely. Hmm. So that's how it's all connected. So, it seems you believe me after all. Do you want me to go public with this? No, of course not. At least, not right now. Then why did you bother telling me? You've read my work. What do you think? <sighs> Even if you were to go public with all of this right now, he'd simply deny everything. It's been too long. Almost 20 years. Anything that could be used as evidence has long faded away. Even if there might have been a solitary island of truth once upon a time, it has long sunk beneath the waves by now. Justice will never find him. Not if you don't try. I know that as the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, you will always stand on the side of justice. But do you really think a cushy life in prison really constitutes justice for him? I bet he could lead an extremely comfortable life in the Fortress of Meripede. What are you trying to say? I've been observing you from a distance. Your portrayal of the Musketeer was exquisite. Pull the trigger of justice against him. Let the villain get what he deserves. You want me to let you go so you may complete your revenge? No, Officer Chavras. I know that would be impossible. No. What I'd like is for you to perform the deed on my behalf. Oh, Chevra sure is taking her time. What could they be talking about anyway? Oh, Paimon's worried. What if he decided to attack her? Oh, uh, you do have a point. Still, do you have any idea who the rich person might be? And why the novelist doesn't want us to hear what he's saying to Chevres? Sorry to keep you waiting, you two. Hey, how did your talk go? I've already sent someone to escort Baptiste back to the headquarters for questioning. He wasn't lying about the musket. It was indeed buried in his backyard. Did he tell you the name of the rich guy? Yes, he did. But for now, I have to return to the special patrol. There are still a few loose ends I need to tie up. I'll probably be quite busy over the next few days, so apologies if you don't see me on set. All 
right. Paimon understands if you can't tell us everything you know. We'll just keep an eye on the steambird then. Actually, there's still something else I need your help with. still have a lot to do with the guild. You. Is Shefras still not joining us today? Uh, probably not. We haven't seen her either. Huh? That, that's such a pity. Director Farina said that we've only got a few small scenes left before wrapping up the entire thing. She even said that she'll get me into a couple scenes so everyone will have a chance to shine in front of the camera. We were also planning on having a victory feast once we're all finished filming. You can join us, right? Mm, if only Chevros was here. I still haven't taken a photo with her. <sighs> I'm afraid that can't be helped. Those special patrol folks are like phantoms when they've got a case on their hands. But to be honest, I'm even more concerned by what I read in the Steambird earlier this morning. It said that the killer in the murder case was none other than the author of the Two Musketeers. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, too. He came forward and confessed his crimes, but gave no explanation as to why he pulled the trigger. We didn't know about this case at all when we joined the film. Is it going to affect the reception of our work? From a pure publicity standpoint, this will draw a lot more attention to our film. Uh, I have to say, though, that no director can be perfectly comfortable with garnering attention through means other than artistic skill. To be fair, I feel like that ship sailed the moment you allowed yourself to be named as the director on our posters. It's not my fault that I'm super popular. What was that saying again? My popularity has... Uh... Sunk to an all-time low? Spread to the four corners of Tavat! <laughs> Uh, excuse me, everyone. Xavier! Feels like it's been ages since we last saw you. I've been talking non-stop with the Film Association, and I'm absolutely swamped trying to coordinate the film's marketing. So forgive me for not being around more often, but please believe me when I say that I will make sure everyone's hard work gets the exposure it deserves. Oh, seems like you've been fighting your own battles. <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it. Oh, and before we begin the final round of filming, please allow me to finally introduce you to the original investor of our film, Mr. Morris. Um, a pleasure to meet you all. Yes, glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Morris. We've heard about the issues you've encountered with your financial situation and genuinely hope that things have taken a turn for the better. Oh, well, uh, the situation has... Uh... Indeed improved somewhat. Don't worry, Mr. Morris. Accidents and last-minute challenges happen all the time. There's no need to blame yourself over it. 
the good news is that we're almost done filming now. And I would even say that this is the best story I've ever seen. Is that so? I see that that's, that's great news. All right, now that we've gotten all the pleasantries out of the way, let's get the show on the road. We'll mostly be filming typical people and scenery from the streets today to improve the sense of environmental ambiance in some parts of the film. Oh, <laughs> and there'll be a cameo for Mr. Kamisato and Miss Yoimiya as well. They'll be used to show outsider perspectives on the fates of the two musketeers. That's right. Ayato should be here any minute. Excellent! Then let's start with the scenery shots. Camera and clapper loader, you're up. Yep, we'll be ready! Remember, all we need are some wide zoom shots of the streets. If you happen to find some particularly lovely patches of flowers and grass, feel free to grab some close-ups of those as well. Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! Okay, now move the camera slowly. Uh, try to focus on that flower. Hmm? What's wrong? Just adjust the focal length a bit. Something the matter? Uh, huh? But wasn't it working fine for all the days before? Veronique, can we try a different camera? No problem. How about this one? All right, let's give it another try. Lights! Camera! Action! Don't tell me. This one is broken, too. Veronique, do we have any other spare ones we can use? Um, mm, I'm afraid we only brought these two today. What? Then go find a workshop to get them repaired right away! Oh, and you too, Bono! Go find our spare camera in the warehouse and bring it back to the set! On it. Greetings, everyone. My apologies for the delay. Hmm? Is something the matter, Ayaka? It seems like there are some issues with the filming equipment today. We're stuck for the moment. I see. Well, let's not just stand here twiddling our thumbs. Actors, to the makeup booth. We'll start on the next scene as soon as we get a working camera. The people at the workshop told me that the part which holds the lens in place seemed to have fallen off. That's super strange. It was perfectly fine just yesterday. Well, no time to dwell on that now. Let's get back to filming. Ahem! Quiet on set! Places, everyone! Lights! Camera! Action! By the way, have you heard about that recent murder case? Hmm, yes, I have. It seems that they've caused quite the commotion in the city. I heard that the chief of the guards is so mad about not catching the culprit that he's about to explode! Oh? I find that quite hard to imagine, considering how he already looks most days. Director! Director! We have a problem! Oh! We're in the middle of a take! Couldn't you wait until we wrapped up this scene? No, Director. Our film... All the finalized film that we've been keeping in the case has disappeared! Oh wait, well, well what did you say? <gasps> Mr. Bono, please take me to where the film was kept right away. I'm coming too. No, Yoimiya, you have to stay here. Oh. Okay, listen up. Everyone who's not working on this current scene can go with Bono to look for the film. Everyone else... Stay put and wrap up the scene. Unbelievable. How could all these problems happen in just one day? We're back. How did it go? Did you find the film? We found it in the sewers. Huh? In the sewers? Is the film still okay? We discovered it just in time, so we should still be able to salvage it. 
The others are checking now to see if we lost any specific scenes. <laughs> you scared me for a moment there! I nearly thought we had lost everything! I really don't want to experience that feeling of despair again. Okay, but who could have stolen the film and dumped it there? Um, could it be uh, some competitors working on other films? But if they wanted to harass us, why wait until the last day? Hmm. Okay, we don't have time to really look into it right now. Let's strike while the iron is still hot and wrap this thing up once and for all. Yeah, let's finish it. I would like to officially announce that our entry to the festival, The Two Musketeers, has now concluded filming! <laughs> uh, I'm on his spent. It's so late already. Even though the filming process proved to be extremely challenging, everyone provided valuable and unique contributions to the final product. Thank you all for your dedication and support. And just like director Farina, I would also like to extend my most heartfelt thanks to all of you. Really, you've all helped me so much. I just... All right, let's save the awards speech for later and hopefully also get some rehearsals in before the real thing. Anyway, now it's time to party! <laughs> let's all make our way to the beach and have a celebration feast so loud and fun that even the blubber beast will want in. <laughs> party, party! Prima wants to party! Whoa! This place is hopping! Everyone's finally getting to relax after wrapping up the film! Let's go chat with someone! Have you ever seen a fireworks show, Mr. Morris? It's pretty amazing! Um, I'm afraid I haven't, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. I was thinking, if this film turns out to be a success, could I ask the two of you to stay and be a part of my crew? Uh, of course, I'll definitely increase the pay for next time. I'd be more than happy to, Mr. Xavier. Thank you for the offer, Mr. Xavier. But I've made some plans to go on a journey to the other nations once the festival is over. Is that so? Well, then in that case, bon voyage, Miss Veronique. Please feel free to get in touch once you've returned to Fontaine. This is turning out to be quite the party. Hey, Ayato! How's your work been going? Everything went rather smoothly. Thank you for your concern. Ayato told me that we've already confirmed the dates for some Inazuma Fontaine cultural exchange events. So the next time we visit, we'll be doing so in our capacities as the representatives of the Yashiro Commission. Oh, that's great! Then maybe Paimon will be able to find Fontaine detective novels in Inazuma from now on! Oh, wait. Wouldn't Yaimiko get upset if that happens? That would be stealing some of her business. Huh, you've got a point. She's always complaining that light novels have become bland and too predictable, after all. The cultural exchange won't only feature literatures of both nations, of course. We have also made plans for cross-cultural engagements in the fields of gourmet cuisine, uh, toy making, and artisan craftsmanship. Wow, Paimon's getting super excited now! When the time comes, be sure to visit and participate in all the events. Clapper loader and camera operator, you've both worked really hard. 
Paimon thinks you worked even harder than us! Honestly, Paimon was getting a little tired of playing with the clapperboard by the end of it. Worst of all, Paimon started having dreams of you shouting, Lights! Camera! Action! into Paimon's ears! The actual dream can't even start until you've yelled that! Uh, hey! If anything, shouldn't I be more grand and delightful than your dreams? <laughs> We've been through so much together, and that's how your brain remembers me? Uh, that, that's not Paimon's fault. We've just used the clapperboard too much lately. Anyway, what's most important is that we wrapped the film. I'm pretty confident that we'll take first prize. <laughs> Hey, no need to mention the official name. <laughs> Wait, now that you mention it, if we did win the prize, would Farina just get a statue of herself? Uh, come on, I don't need that kind of attention. Xavier can accept the reward on our behalf. But just imagine! Farina accepting the Farina Award and holding a Farina statue. Uh, I'm going back to my dessert now. You all can keep discussing that on your own. Chiori! Hey, you two. Are you not really into these kinds of big social occasions? Uh, not particularly. But this is still better than Fontaine Fashion Week. <laughs> but if this film becomes a big hit, people will definitely come flocking to your shop. Yes, that's highly likely. As long as the film can premiere as planned. Are you still worried about the case? That and all the obstacles we had to face today. You're right. It's as if all our bad luck just manifested at once. But why today of all days? Hmm? No. No, it's nothing. We've already delivered the film to the editors, so there should be nothing more to worry about. How are you doing, Mr. Morris? You having a good time? Well, you could say that. Uh, do you happen to know when the party is scheduled to end? <laughs> Judging by how much fun everyone's having, I'd say probably not until well after midnight. Is there something that you still have to take care of at home, Mr. Morris? Oh, well, uh, I'm just not a late night person, so I might take off shortly. Oh no! Uh, silly me! I almost forgot something super important. Oh, uh, what is it? I prepared a whole batch of fireworks for the party, but I forgot to bring them over from the warehouse. Fireworks, you say? Well, that's, uh, truly a pity. Sorry things didn't go as planned. Could you help me carry them over, Mr. Morris? I won't be able to fetch all of them by myself. Me? Uh, uh are you sure that you can't find anyone else? <laughs> I just wanted to make this surprise for everyone. The warehouse isn't far from here. We'll be there in no time. Pretty please, Mr. Morris. These are some of the best fireworks I've ever made. So I also want you to see them before you leave. They're stunning. I promise that they'll be a once-in-a-lifetime experience that you'll never forget. Uh, but... It's okay. Just come with me. If we're sneaky enough, nobody else will see us leaving. <sighs> All right. The warehouse is right over here. I moved the fireworks there in advance, so it shouldn't be too much work bringing them back. Uh, it's still a ways away from the party. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr. Morris. It's probably because I'm used to carrying fireworks all the time, so it doesn't feel like a lot of work to me. Here. Oh, wait here, Mr. Morris. I think the light switch should be somewhere uh, here. Well, uh, why did I have to get roped into this? Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, 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 who's there? Get me out! Get me out of here! Did you really think you'd get away? 
Morris. <laughs> You, you've got the wrong guy! It wasn't me! I, I, I'm not the killer! <laughs> you know, Elisa died a far more heroic death than this. She fought your assassin to the end, to save the children she had hidden beneath the floorboards. <laughs> that is Elisa's pendant. The one with a photo of you two inside. The one you gave her. Ring any bells? It's a fake! It has to be! There's no way! No way your assassin didn't destroy it, you mean? <laughs> Did you ever love her, Morris? Or was killing her always the plan? No, 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 please! Listen to me! I told Eliza to keep us a secret! I paid her plenty for her silence! I never thought she'd keep the child! Everything was gonna come out, and I had no choice! She forced my hand! No! I'm begging you. I have money. Just, just name your price, please! You can keep your Mora, and you can go to hell. <laughs> I'm Captain Shavraz of the Special Patrol. Morris, you're under arrest for Eliza's murder. Huh? You're under arrest too, Prop Manager Veronique. Or perhaps I should call you the Second Musketeer. Drop the gun, Veronique. Why? Why would you keep me from exacting revenge on this heartless monster? Drop your weapon. This is my final warning. <sighs> what? What is going on? Do I have to spell it out for you, Morris? Everything that took place just now was staged to get you to confess the truth. But this last part is all improv, of course. <sighs> uh, Shivras, you told us you wanted us to help you stage a play. You never said anything about the second musketeer! It's because even I had no way to confirm my theory until now. Thank you for your performance, Yoimiya. Could I trouble you to go and bring in the other special patrol members? They should be on standby just outside. Oh, and please tell the other cast members not to worry about us. We'll be rejoining them shortly. On it! So what do you think, Morris? Care to talk about what happened 20 years ago? <laughs> My patience is limited, you know. Don't force me to take you back to the interrogation room. I'd wager that you wouldn't last for more than a minute in there. With the recording we made, you have no chance of winning in court. Cooperating with us now is the most practical move. All right. I'll talk. I hired an assassin to murder Elisa. She once worked as a maid on my family's estate. She was very beautiful, and after some time I fell for her. We kept our relationship a secret and carried out an affair for some time, but it wasn't long before she became pregnant. And if my parents ever found out, they would have stripped me of my inheritance and status, driven me out of my home. I also didn't expect Elisa to insist on bringing the pregnancy to term. She even asked me to leave my family and travel far, far away with her. She believed that you were truly in love with her. I didn't have a choice. I gave her a large sum of Mora, told her to leave the family and to get rid of the baby. But then, years later, she sent me a letter that there were photos of two children and she even asked if I could find some time to visit them! Huh? Two children? Paimon thought Baptiste was the only... Uh... You mean... 
Even if she had the children against your will, you could have just ignored the letter entirely. Why kill her? I had just gotten engaged to be married to an heiress from another wealthy family. So if anyone were to find out about Elisa, my life would be completely ruined! I didn't have a choice! No. You always had a choice. You just made the wrong choice. Again. <sighs> Do you know how it feels to watch your mother be killed right in front of you? My brother and I were hardly even school age yet. We were hidden beneath the floorboards, grasping each other's hands like a lifeline. We were so terrified that we didn't even know we could ever take a breath. All we could do was to watch Mother try to fight back, and then... collapse to the floor. Even after the assassin left, we were still too terrified to leave our hiding spot. We thought that he might come back. It was only until the next evening, when we finally climbed out and gathered around our mother. But she... had already become cold and stiff to the touch. You made up your mind right then and there to bring this case to light. Not only that, we resolved to get our revenge. And that's why you became the Musketeers. No, that's why I became a Musketeer! The man from before was also killed by me. My brother had nothing to do with it. I figured as much. Uh, you did? I once told these two that he didn't look like a killer to me. His confession from that night also rubbed me the wrong way. I think what really tipped me off was, how could I not feel a sense of regret in him? Huh? He confessed faster than any criminal I've ever met, but he didn't say a single word about you. He insisted that he was the sole perpetrator in the case. But after the questioning ended, I disassembled the musket we dug up from his backyard, put it in front of him, and told him to reassemble it. Wanna guess how far he got? <laughs> he had no idea where to even start. He's never touched a gun in his life. Based on that, I determined that he was not acting alone. He only surrendered himself to draw our attention and create a moment of opportunity for his partner. So, I decided to play along. And as expected, the second musketeer followed us without hesitation once she saw Morris get separated from the rest of the cast. Besides, why else would he call the novel The Two Musketeers? But how did you know it was Veronique? I figured it out the moment Baptiste told me his father's name. That so-called financial crisis was all just a ruse. He just wanted to sign up as the investor and then leave the film without any source of funding. After all, he has a vested interest in minimizing the reach of this story. It's really just the same thing as what he did to Elisa all those years ago. Human scum. But then Xavier pulled out all the stops and got the film made against all odds. Morris couldn't have that. With the killer in custody, he figured it was safe to act. And so he came to visit the set today, just as I expected. Wait, so you were behind all those mishaps today? <gasps> as for the identity of the second musketeer, I assumed they'd probably stay close to Morris and look for an opening. And if they already knew that Morris was the film's investor, then that narrowed the list of potential suspects as well. Furthermore, being the props manager would allow the culprit to avoid scrutiny by purchasing mechanical parts in the name of the crew. With that hypothesis in mind, I went back to check Baptiste's orphanage adoption records. Guess whose name I saw on the same page, just a few lines from his. <sighs> My brother. He trusted you. <laughs> As in he trusted me to perform the deed on his behalf? He trusted you to stand on the side of justice. I am. I thought you could do it as well. Oh, the look on your face when you told him to go to hell. I really thought you'd put a bullet in his brain. You know what he has done. 
Are you telling me that you'd rather see him spend the rest of his life living like a king in the fortress of Meripede? I will never be able to forget the feeling of my mother's cold, lifeless hands. And you would call this ending fair? Is this what you call justice? I won't lie, Veronique. I did hesitate when your brother first told me about the truth. I wondered. I agonized over whether I should really put a bullet in his head. So why don't you? Because that should never be how justice is carried out in this world. Perhaps, to you, justice is simply reciprocated. An eye for an eye, and a life for a life. But everyone has their own understanding of justice. If everyone were to pursue their own definition of it, there would be no more order in this world. Today, you'll kill Morris, and tomorrow, his children may come for you. The world cannot render judgments based on a desire for revenge. That will only lead to a cycle of revenge as well as the destruction of order and civilized society. Fontaine is founded on a set of laws and a standardized code of justice. That is why we are the nation of justice. But with all that said, I will promise you this. Morris will not lead a cushy life in the fortress of Meripede. Chivalrous, the rest of the special patrol is here. Thank you so much, Yoimiya. L'Atelier, Terena, please take them away. I still can't agree with your reasoning. I know. Justice has not been delivered. At least, not today. Chevres. Let's go. We should give an explanation to the crew. Thank you for your concern. I'm fine. I'm just thinking about the things in life that have driven people to take justice into their own hands. <laughs> Who would have thought Morris would turn out to be... Uh, I'm at a loss of words. How could he have done something like this? I'm just glad that you're all safe and sound. Who knew that such a labyrinth of cases would be behind this story? Well, what should we do now? We have a finished film, of course, but should we still go ahead with the premiere? What do you mean? Shouldn't you be even more motivated to spread the word now that you've learned the truth? Chiori is right. I'd also like more people to see this story for themselves. But the real ending of the story seems to have deviated somewhat from the one in the script. Is that still acceptable to you, Miss Chevres? Mm. The call is yours. We still have time to reshoot an ending if that's what you'd like. No, it's fine as is. I like what we have for the catharsis. Romanticism is what gives works of art their appeal. Fiction is able to explore means of restitution that could never work in real life. Just like the real world, the world of stories also has its own set of rules and justice. These different possibilities are what initially drew me to reading in the first place. Sounds good to me. I support your decision. What about Veronique? Will she be okay? She will soon face her judgment alongside her brother and Morris. If I had to guess, they'll probably all be sent to the Fortress of Meripede. I'll make sure to give Risley a heads up about it. Oh, you mean that kind of heads up? Exactly. Ahem! All right, then the matter's settled. Now that everything's been taken care of, there's no reason for us to keep looking all gloomy and grumpy. Let's get back to the feast and enjoy each other's company. We'll be starting the post-production process tomorrow. You should join us, Chevres. You missed the first few hours of the party, didn't you? All right, count me in. Then I'll wait for you over there. There's still some good news that I'd like to share with Chevras. Traveler, Paimon, could you wait for me by the sea after the party ends? I'd like to go on a brief walk with the two of you. 
Thank you very much. Sorry for the wait. Oh, we weren't waiting long at all. Is there something else you wanted to tell us? No, I don't have anything new to share. I just felt that, since you were my investigation partners, I should have another conversation with the two of you. Uh... Traveler, how would you have responded to Baptiste's request if you were in my shoes? When I was young, my father often took me here to swim. We'd come rain or shine, even when it was freezing cold. He told me that swimming was the best activity to train one's strength of will. You could never give up before reaching the shore, especially when the water was cold. Oh? Why is that? Because the moment you give up would be the moment you die. At that point, I still hadn't received my vision. One winter, the chilly wind felt almost like knives on my skin, and the seawater was so frigid that it numbed my toes the moment I stepped in. I cried and begged my father to spare me from having to swim across, but he wouldn't listen. He used to be a member of the Special Patrol as well. You could say it was his way of educating his children. That sounds awful. When he saw that I wouldn't stop crying, he just picked me up and tossed me into the icy water. The bone-chilling cold took away my senses. I couldn't feel anything but fear and rage. I waited for my father to save me, but one look and I knew he'd already started swimming for the opposite shore. I realized that if I were to give up, I really would die right then and there. I used all of my strength to try and catch up to my father. Those few minutes felt longer than my whole life up until that point. I did, however, make it to the other side. I've never felt afraid about anything in my life after that, nor have I ever cried again. That way of teaching would have never worked on Paimon. Yeah, I don't think that was the right method for anyone. It's just that working now as I am in the pursuit of justice, I still sometimes feel like I've been tossed into that winter sea all over again. The anger and the helplessness. Chevres. But the worse I feel, the more I know to never give up. The alternative would be to forever lose myself among the waves. Anyway, how about a race? Neither of us will drown, but we can still see who swims faster. Uh, you guys go ahead! Hyma will grab the clapper board to mark the start of the race! Oh, that felt good. You were so fast in the water, Chevres! You were swimming even faster than Paimon could fly! Uh, so, about the Special Patrol, did you join because of your dad? Partly, but I'd say I was more inspired by the heroes I read about in stories growing up. Oh, so it's due to your love of stories! Of course. It was only after I joined the Special Patrol that I learned that truth is often stranger than fiction. Come on, let's walk a bit more. To be honest, I do sometimes question whether the decisions I make are the right ones. But I know that no matter what, I must keep swimming. Because the only thing I've got my eyes on is the shore in the distance. Yeah. 
thank you for coming on this walk with me. I feel a lot better after getting all that off my chest. Huh. We're nearly back at Baptiste's house. Huh. You're right. I didn't realize we were so close. He really did plant a lot of flowers. It's just like how he described it in the story. Huh? <gasps> Wait. Paimon, Traveler, look! The rainbow roses in the garden. They're in full bloom now. Even though it's a bit late, I must thank you for investigating this case with me. Not on behalf of the Special Patrol this time. It's a personal expression of gratitude from yours truly. Oh, you want to hear more about my father? To be honest, I didn't spend that much time with him. He was always busy with the Special Patrol, so he would often return home really late at night. Some nights, he didn't come home at all. Once, he didn't come home for a long time, maybe a whole week or so. When I went out to buy food, I learned that he had become a criminal, and by extension, that made me a criminal's daughter. But we can talk about that another day. I actually have a lot of sympathy for Veronique and Baptiste. I can understand the hatred they feel for their father. But that doesn't mean I'll allow them to walk the path of evil, even if it might lead to another sense of justice. Films are different from the real world. They're a form of art and represent the wishes in people's hearts. I adore the two musketeers, and I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to act the role as one. I can't wait to catch the film when it premieres in the Opera House. I'm looking forward to seeing the audience's reaction to the climactic ending. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll see you at the award ceremony. I'd be very surprised if we don't win. Hey there, you two! Sorry I've been scarce, I've been buried in marketing and preparing the film for release ever since we wrapped post-production. The award ceremony is today, right? Paimon wonders if we'll win the Farina Award! I'd give it a 90% chance. Farina! Oh, Paimon didn't know you were already here! You're earlier than everyone else! I'm sure the others will also be here in no time. Uh... Xavier, if we end up getting called on stage, shouldn't you come up with a name for our crew? What? Uh, but we don't even know if we're going to win. I wouldn't want to jinx our chances by celebrating early. <laughs> Just open your eyes! Surely you've seen the audience's reactions to our film. We've had nothing but critical acclaim. You've also had conversations with the Opera House's operating staff, right? Didn't they want to increase the number of showings? With the Mora you've made from the box office, you can now open your very own film company! But that's all credit to my amazing crew! You've all helped to make this a reality, so I can't be the only one asked to come up with a name. Well, give it some thought. I'm sure the crew will respect your choice. All right, but before that, Traveler and Paimon, could I trouble you to quickly pay a visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Huh? But shouldn't we stay for the award ceremony? I wanted to ask you two to invite Shavras to join us at the ceremony. She's one of the lead roles, after all. 
I haven't been able to find her recently, so I haven't had the chance to invite her personally. According to the papers, the culprits of the musket murder case will be personally escorted today by the captain of the special patrol to the fortress of Meripede. Oh, Paimon gets it now. Yep, just wait here, Xavier, and maybe try to come up with a few snappy-sounding names. All right, then I'll leave you to it. This is as far as I'll be taking them. I'll leave the three of them to you now. Got another errand to run? Something like that? I'm expected at a party. Now that's something you don't hear every day. Found a new pastime? No, it's just a special occasion. Shabras! Risley! Festivals really do bring people together. It's been a while since I last had so many visitors at the Fortress of Meripede. Call it the festival spirit, I guess. Yeah, you could say that. Even our head nurse has gotten herself all worked up preparing super deluxe nutritious shakes. Just one gulp and you'll have met all your nutrition needs. Were you talking about work just now? We've already finished discussing everything. So, what do you think about my heads up, Mr. Risley? Hmm. I believe I haven't yet made any promises or guarantees. But you also didn't shoot me down. Here, how about this? You could give everyone a copy of the newspaper, perhaps on the day when the cover story happens to, oh, I don't know, expose a certain someone's misdeeds from 20 years ago? Hmm. I suppose then a certain someone may soon find himself the most unlucky person in the Fortress of Meripede? While another two people will soon be hailed as heroes. Speaking of heroes, did you two need something from me? Oh, uh, actually, we're here for... You're here to invite me to the party, right? Don't worry, I didn't forget. Oh, then let's head back right away! See you, Risley! Happy Fontanalia Festival! And the same to you. And the winner of the Farina Award for the first Fontanalia Film Festival is... The Two Musketeers! Congratulations, Mr. Xavier. We won? Uh, uh, I can't believe it! I, I really can't thank all of you enough! See? My takes on Fontaine's entertainment industry have never been wrong. Now, please welcome to the stage the producer of The Two Musketeers, Mr. Xavier! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much for your recognition and support. While I'm up here, I would love to give special thanks to... Time really flies, huh? It certainly feels that way. It feels like it was only yesterday when you were teaching me to hold a musket. Will you come back to Fontaine again? Of course. I'm very fond of the city. There are so many novel and interesting things that it's been hard to keep track of them all. But how about you? Would you be interested in visiting Inazuma? I can't say the thought has crossed my mind before, but I'd be willing to consider it now. I will be eagerly awaiting your visit. It would be wonderful if you could visit my home and enjoy a taste of our tea and desserts. Yeah, let's keep in touch. Did you accomplish all you came here for? Yes. And you should visit Inazuma again sometime. How has Ogura and her business been? To my knowledge, she's doing quite well. Tell her I said hi. 
I certainly will. I heard the thunderstorm has stopped. Yes, and the war has also been brought to an end. Peace and prosperity has returned to the islands. I quite like the sound of that. Perfect for hanging textiles out to dry. I'd like to offer my thanks again to the entire cast and crew. Without you, I would have never completed this film, much less had the opportunity to be standing on this stage. With the support of my entire crew, I would like to officially announce our film company, Musketeer Pictures! Ho-ho! <laughs> that has a really nice ring to it! Then in that case, let's please welcome all the members of Musketeer Pictures onto the stage for a commemorative photo! Oh, Paimon didn't know we'd also be taking pictures! Director Farina, I believe you are the most deserving person to raise this trophy. Huh? No, 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 no. There's no need. It's so embarrassing. It's an honor the director deserves. Yes, I agree. Just accept that you're not getting out of this. Ready, everyone? Three, two, one! Musketeer, Musketeer Pictures! pictures!